Hello, this is a quick instructional video on how to update your IPv5 firmware. That's the IPv5 from Pioneer for you. Uh, they're periodically going to be releasing firmware updates apparently for this product, so I wanted to show you today how you go ahead and update it. What you're going to do is take both batteries out of the mod and plug it into your computer. Now you can do this before or after downloading the program. You're going to go to that page. It says it in your in your owner's manual. Let's see if I can find it there. Pioneerforyou.com, right there. You're going to go to that page, and there's going to be an IPv5 tab where you can download the software. It's going to be in a WinZip or some sort of zipped file. You have to unzip or open both the files and transfer them to a folder on your computer. I just put mine on the desktop. Those are the two files that were in it. SXI, which is an application, and this SX330 IPv5 blah 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 version 2.0. That's the actual firmware. So after you unzip those files, you can open this SXI viewer, this dashboard explorer thing. You plug your unit in with no batteries. Again, there has to be no batteries in order to make the connection to upgrade the firmware. You have to take the batteries out. You click on the connection tab in this SXI program and you click connect and it should say your device is connected, right? So after that you can click return, you can go back to the main page here. Now you click on this upgrade tab. You're going to click open file. Now I've already done this, I've already upgraded my device so I'm just going to be doing it again as if you already have it. So this won't be here when you will first do it, it won't say you've opened a file. So you have to open a file, you're going to explore to where you unzipped that SX330 file, which for me is the desktop. So I go onto the desktop because that's the folder I unzipped it in. I click it, it's looking for an SXI upgrade file, and this is an SXI upgrade file. So you're going to open that file. Now once it's opened and your device is connected and you've confirmed that it's connected, you're going to want to click upgrade. Now when you click upgrade, it's going to start counting the percentage bar across the bottom. It should take about anywhere from 5 seconds to 1 or 2 minutes, depending on how old or how slow your computer is. Now it just said I'm done, so I can return now, and that's about it. One of the things I did notice is that the connection install driver, I did this about a week ago, I first installed this program, so I don't remember if I had to install the driver before or after I updated my firmware, but it's something to keep in mind. Now one of the things you're going to want to do when you're done updating the firmware is you're going to want to safely remove your device so you can go down to the bottom and then you can safely remove your hardware. That icon should disappear. And it basically just safely disconnects your device so that you can unplug it without, you know, erasing everything that's on there or c corrupting any of the files that are on there. So then you want to unplug your device after you've safely removed it. Now to check which firmware version you have, there's a way to do that, and you can't access it through the normal menu when the device is running. So what you're actually going to do is put the batteries in while pressing and holding the power button. That's what you're going to want to do with the device to see what firmware version you have. So I press and hold the power button. I put the batteries in, facing the correct ways, of course. When you put them in, keep holding the button down, the screen should come on. And you'll notice it says, don't know how well you can see that, but it says 2.0 at the bottom. T 2.0. And then the regular Pioneer screen comes on. That means that I have the 2.0 version of the firmware, so it did successfully update. And I hope that was helpful to you guys. If you have any problems, Updating your IPv5, you can post a comment. I'll try to answer you if I can. I'm not an expert, but I might be able to help. And uh, as far as I know, this only works on a Windows machine. I haven't tried it on a Mac. It may work. I really don't know. But I did this on my old Compaq Windows XP. It runs Windows XP. So it works fine on that type of computer. Here's the device running that second um, version of the firmware. And what I've noticed is that... Um, 
when the firmware has been upgraded to 2.0, it doesn't have that 75 watt glitch anymore when I put the batteries back in. It stays right at 90 or wherever it was. I can go up to 200 with no problem. So, all right, thanks guys. See ya.